at burnandlearn.net. Go and register now. All right. Welcome back to this episode of Burn and Learn. I'm your host, Scott Rogers. I'd like to thank Chuck. He's been helping out with the website. That's real cool. Looks great. Uh, I'd like to thank our friends over in Europe. Thanks for participating and hanging out with us online. It's nice to see you guys. Uh, we're going to do an inside out. We're going to try to gather up the glass. Help you guys the best I can. I realize it's pretty hard. I think you guys just need to get it hot. Right? You guys are afraid to get it like really hot. We'll go over that. But first we're going to go over some colors. These are my favorite colors. Yellow. This one wants to boil a little bit so I'll coat it before I use it. This one here is Raven. I like this. This is a uh, got a lot of color saturation. It's good black to use. Boro stick. This is the their white. There's a lot of uh, colors they have there, and I'll uh, make a list and post it on the burnandlearn.net. Just regular cobalt. I like to coat colors with cobalt. Take this China White, for instance. This is a real high color saturation. I like to use that one. I coat this with the blue. Makes a real nice uh, electric blue looking stuff. Another good one. Unobtainium. A real nice sparkly color. You can coat this onto the white. The, oh, Elvis Red. I love this stuff. When I make a list of the colors, I'll find out which companies make it. I go to a supply house here in town. I just pick up the stuff there at the supply house. So I get to pick through it. You guys will have to know which company and exactly what the name is. I kind of just go for a bin and a color. I don't need to know the details. But I'll find them out for you. Okay, so this Elvis Red, awesome freaking red. Best red ever. Uh, what do we got here? Number six. This has the highest color saturation of any color that I know of. I love it. Uh, with your cobalts, you might be able to notice, you probably can't with the camera, but there's a little bit of gray ashy stuff on here. It's called devitrification, and the way you get, you try to get away from it is a really hot flame. A lot of oxygen, just the hottest flame you can get will help keep the vitrification away from the cobalt. Ross to gold. I like this one. It doesn't boil too much, so it's an easy color to use. Forest green. This thing boils up bad, but it's not if you, um, oh, okay. I can show you guys that real quick. This is a good color show. Okay, let's say you got a color that boils. You're going to want to get a, the, the least amount of oxygen possible. Come way out here. If you come in too close, it might want to boil on you. Right now I got it adjusted right. And if I want to, I could pull down a streamer. But I'm not going to do that because I don't want to. But what I could show you is this this color will boil. I'll add a bunch of oxygen. I'll add some oxygen to it. Go like that. Uh, look, we got a boiled mess there on the end. Just like that. So if you're going to do something like sculpt with it, you might want to try coating it first. 
I like the steel wool. This stuff here wants to boil up a lot, but you can still lay this stuff down. Like I would coat white. I like to coat white with it. Or coat this uh, steel wool's always got to be coated. No exceptions. It's got to be coated with clear. But what I like to do is put a little bit of dark cobalt or regular cobalt, either one, and coat the steel wool with it. Try to put a thin coat on there. And then when you pull it down, it'll be a blue sparkly color. Or you can do it with a, a maybe not the dark Elvis, but a light Elvis red and put it on there and you get like a red sparkle or you can use a translucent green make a green sparkle you get the the uh, color and then you know how yellow and blue make green you can always coat yellow with blue as long as it's a translucent blue you get a nice green color um, orange this is a real stable color it's easy to use Red, real stable, easy to use. These are you. Can, you guys probably already know what colors these are, right? These are all your crayon colors. Alchemy does these. So I think this is uh, this number six is Alchemy. This number, this Raven is Alchemy. Uh, steel wool. Shoot, I don't know. Uh, I know this is North Star, the forest green. That's it for that. Let's uh, let's get on the torch and we'll gather up some glass. Uh, some of you guys have some trouble on there. It's cool that James is on there and he's trying. I know it's difficult, James. It was difficult for me at first, but just got to keep going with it. You got to be, you got to just like get it as hot as possible. Okay, we're going to do that right now. How many minutes are we, Kyle? We are... I think we have eight minutes left. Oh, that's plenty. Until we hit the 15 minute mark. Okay, now if you put some... If you put color or clear on the inside, it's got to lay down flat. And if it's not laid down flat, you're going to have to shoot the flame in there and take your carbon rod and push it down so it all lays down flat. But before you even get to laying stuff on the inside, you have to be able to marver, marver this stuff thick. That's how you do it. You use the heat and you use your marvering pad. And you got to heat it up even. And you can't pull apart. You can't let your hands drift apart. If anything, you're going to be pushing in a little bit. And I find if I arc it like this, can you see that? I'm kind of arcing that, Kyle? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we can see that. Okay, well, you put a slight arc on it while you're doing this. And it kind of holds that molten stuff up there where you want. Can you see that? See that, guys? Look. See how I'm doing that? This is, this is exaggerated. I'm just barely doing that little bend right now. But it's important. It's subtle. You might not be able to see it on camera, but I'm doing it. And that's how I'm keeping that stuff and floating it right there. All that molten glass wants you to just fall on the table. But I'm not letting it. It just wants to fall everywhere. That's how hot you have to get this stuff. And then once you get it super hot, quickly marble it. Now if you happen to have drawn stuff on the inside, you marbled it once, and then you're going to puff out. Okay? That's going to force whatever you 
all it's going to force the lines you drew on the inside to the surface. Heat it up again and repeat the same process. Heat it up. So hot that you think you can't even control it anymore. But you're going to have to learn to control it. Quickly marver. Now by this time your lines should be worked in pretty good. Come back in. <clears throat> Same thing again. You're going to heat this up just to where you think you can't even control it anymore. Let it cool. Pull it out a little bit. And give it a little pop. And then your stem is formed. As that's cooling, come in here. Same thing here, you gotta float this stuff, man. You gotta be brave. You can do it. Okay, and while that's cooling, take your punty off. Okay, now the front is the same process as the stem. Okay, we just did the stem. Then we repeated the process for the mouthpiece. We're going to repeat the same process for the bowl. Just going to heat it up. We're assuming that we put lines in here. Can you heat it up? Okay. We sh we're going to assume that we shrunk this thing down. Like really far. And then we blew it out. And then we shrink it down again. This one, oh, okay, I know what you guys might be doing out there. If you spin this too fast, you know, let's say you're trying to concentrate the glass for the first time after you've drawn all your stuff in there and you've closed the front down and you're going to heat up that center section, if you're spinning it too fast, you're just throwing that glass out, centrifugal force, and it's never going to uh, concentrate. So you're going to have to slow down your spin when you heat it up. I know that sounds crazy. That's why it's so hard to do this. you got to slow down and get it molten at the same time, which is counterproductive to each other, trust me. But that's what you got to do. Okay, so... We heated the bowl up, we shrunk it down, then we blew it out a little bit, then we shrunk it down again, you blow it out, and you make the bowl. Nice to see you guys posting work online. You guys are coming along well. You know, you guys are the future of glass blowing.
Miniature Pipe Makers of America. You gotta learn to uh, get in the zone. Lately I've been addicted to the zone. Coming out here and just working and You guys have questions, feel free to ask. Pretty soon things are going to be busy on there. The dynamics and everything might change and I might not be there all the time to hang out, chat and stuff. Hoping to get some wholesale buyers there on the website. I'd like Burn and Learn to be a place where you know you can get your supplies, or not get them, but you know hook up with the people that sell the supplies. Learn how to use stuff, you know, from the show. And then sell your product online, wholesale. You know, maybe even get some sort of a, uh, some sort of an Etsy gang going. You know, and take over Etsy as far as pipes go. I think they have circles or something. You know, get some big old burn and learn circle going there. Well, I guess that's about it, okay? Yeah, I think we covered a, a decent amount today, yeah. so... It's been a laid-back episode. Yeah, it's kind of cold, but, you know, the torch keeps things pretty warm in here. <laughs> yeah, we got our new lighting system. Yeah, it's high-tech. Alright, well, until next time, burn and learn. Love you, fucker.